When trying to understand why a person has done something, people often explain it as simply human error or as part of their personality. This is unhelpful and often wrong. To learn from the consequences of others' actions, we must look at the bigger picture to understand why they did that, sometimes called a system view. There is a human behavior model which simplifies all the science to explain and help us understand why people act the way they do. Some actions we take are unintentional. These we call slips and lapses. They happen as a natural part of being human. However, most actions we take we mean to do, even if we don't get the consequences we wanted. The way the brain works is, before we do anything, we have a mental plan, an intention. Before we can form an intention to act, our brain needs to answer three simple questions. The questions are called gap, outcome, and power. The gap question. Is there a gap between the current situation and how I want it to be? Is there a need to do something? The outcome question. What's in it for me when I do this? The power question. Do I have the ability to make it happen? Is it within my power? Our answers to these simple questions are always based on our perceptions of the world and our beliefs about how the world works, rather than facts. People's perceptions are their reality, which can change over time based on past experiences of what we and others do. If we take the time to reflect and make sense of our experiences, this allows learning to take place, which can mean shifting our beliefs about how the world works and our place in it. Because people are basically social animals, our past experiences and our contacts with people around us have a major influence on the way we act just now. A wide range of people, such as our family and friends, make up the influencing environment, which, through our past experiences, affects our beliefs and perceptions, and hence how we act. The stronger the relationship we have with a group, the more influence they have on us. For example, religious leaders have a major influence on some people. Within our work environment, our colleagues and supervisors have a strong influence on us. Our experience with them and previous bosses, what they say and do, affects our perceptions, which indirectly, but significantly, influences the way we act at work. For incident investigation, we need to understand the whole system in which a person is working. For example, if someone breaks a rule, we must understand why. What was the gap? Why did they believe something needed doing? Outcome. Why did they think there was a good reason to do it that way? If it had been successful, would there have been a benefit for them, their colleagues, or the company? And power. Why did they feel able to do it? We know their past experiences led to their beliefs about what they should do. So we should ask what the role of others was in the influencing environment. This can take many forms. For example, what they thought others expected them to do. What others were doing or not doing at the same time. Previous experience of interventions. And the consequences of past actions and feedback from previous similar situations. We can see ourselves in this influencing environment either as management, a colleague, a supervisor, or direct report. This means we had a role to play in the overall system, which led to the person acting the way they did. What all this means is that in order to prevent intentional acts, we need to look deeper to understand exactly why someone did what he or she did, and not just stop at blaming a person's attitude. The ideas in the human behavior model are not new. They are the theory that lies behind tripod incident analysis, in which we diagrammatically show the events that took place in the incident and the barriers that should have stopped it. 
One of the ways of using the human behavior model is to obtain a deeper understanding of why the barriers failed. In the tripod approach to analyzing incidents, when a barrier fails, it's the result of an error or an intentional act, the direct cause. Identifying these acts is only the first step. Next, we need to identify and understand the context or mindset in which an action is taken. This is usually referred to as a precondition. The preconditions are the reasons someone believed there was a need to do something, why they thought there was a good reason for doing it the way they did, and why they believed they would be able to do it successfully. Answering these questions leads us to start considering the real underlying causes of the preconditions, which are often common causes of many incidents. These underlying causes have often been in the system for a long time, lying unnoticed. These underlying causes are often the actions and decisions of our managers and colleagues who make up the influencing environment. For all incidents, we should understand which parts of the influencing environment led to the preconditions that influenced the person to act the way they did. If the incident was work-related, then it's under management control and means managers and colleagues had a role to play in the incident. Actions and decisions taken as part of the business management system are underlying causes. Using the human behavior model with the tripod incident analysis methodology helps to clearly identify both the direct and underlying causes. It also makes the conclusions more personal because as managers and colleagues, we can see our role in creating the environment that led to the incident. We therefore should always try to understand the unintended consequences our actions have on the beliefs and perceptions of others. Once we understand how we unintentionally influence others, we can help create an influencing environment that prevents incidents.